and welcome to this week's episode of The Consented Narrative. We will be looking at The Lamplighters by Emma Stonex. Now, somehow I've ended up with quite a few books about lighthouses. I don't, I, I, I don't know how I've managed that, but I guess they've got quite interesting stories around them. So this one's premise is Cornwall in 19... Oh, dropped the book then. Cornwall in 1972, three keepers vanish from this lighthouse. No one can come onto the lighthouse, no one can come off of the lighthouse without a boat. It's essentially just a lighthouse in the middle of nothing. There is no land around it, it's just that lighthouse. Um, and it's then looking into the people that were left behind, and it's looking into basically what happened. And I'm just going to say now, you're not going to be disappointed. So for a long time, I genuinely did think it was going to be a, well, it could have been this, it could have been this. They do tell you. Now, I'm not going to tell you what happens. I'm not going to say if it's supernatural or non-supernatural. I'm not going to say if anyone's possessed. I'm not going to say if it was just human fo like uh, folly. I'm not going to say any of that. But at least you find out. Only because I genuinely dislike books and films that have ambiguous endings. Or have endings where it's up to you to decide and so on and so forth. And I'm always like, I'm paying you. <laughs> For me to read or watch or whatever, you need to tell me how it ends. Like you can't, you can't be like, oh, you decide how it ends. No, you tell me. Um, so essentially, it picks up again twenty years later, and it picks up with this person that's writing a book about the the mystery, um, and the person that's writing the book about the mystery you don't he, he that person doesn't really speak it's not it's not about them that's just the way that the story can get told it's about like the partners that were left behind and the secrets that were hiding and the people like the three men that disappeared and what their lives were like and what the fallout was like and and it has a really good insight on like with lighthouses with certain ones the isolation that gets you and the fact that if you don't have something to to keep you occupied or something to keep you busy or anything like that then you do have that issue and you do kind of go a bit stir crazy again that may or may not have been the issue i'm not going to tell you you are going to find out when you read it but it took me a little while to get into it and it's only because when people are speaking and when there's like an interview going on, you know, and you've got like, oh, this person said, this person said, this person said. This read more like a monologue with certain chapters where it was like, the pe like for example, like, and I thought this and then I said this and then I did this and then we did this and then I did that. And it's there's no to and from individual people. It's like someone just literally spilling off what they were thinking. And that did grate on me a little bit, I'm not going to lie. That's why it gets a three out of five from me, because those chapters were really hard for me to read. It's just, it's not because they were badly written. It's just that I don't like that writing style. I I like breaks in it. I like knowing that there's a conversation going on. And that's just me personally. You might love that writing style, but it's like when Shakespeare goes off on a huge monologue. You know, I love all the rest of these kind of... I, lo I, I do like Shakespeare, but like when there's a huge monologue going on like for like four pages, I don't like that. That that does bother me a bit because I'm just a bit... I, I guess I just get a little bit bored and I just get a little bit hard to read it. But that's my personal preference. So it gets a three out of five from me. And I love, I love the mystery. I love the fact that it jumps between 1972 and then 1992. And it sort of picks up and, and drops and weaves it. And I love the personal aspect of it as well, that it's looking at the people that are left behind after this huge disappearance. And it's not just, you know, this weird... And it doesn't go too out there. So although, you know, again, not going to tell you the ending, but it doesn't go too ridiculous. Like, everything that happens in the book is a believable, like, knock-on effect, as opposed to, you know, one minute you're reading it and then they've all three been abducted, but abducted by aliens. So now you know that doesn't happen. But so I really, I really enjoyed it for that point. And I would say that it has a really nice personal aspect. And if you love the constant monologuing, then it will probably be a highly rated book for you. But for me, that's just my personal preference. But as I said, it gets a three out of five and I would still recommend you read it because it is a really good intriguing mystery. Um, and if you do read it, leave it below in the comments what you thought of it. Um, thank you very much for your continued support. And remember to always keep it contento.